<laughs> Funny cats. <laughs> Hey guys, how are you all doing on this fantastic day? My name is Nate, and today I want to talk about all the things you should know to get started with trading, as well as some useful information and tips to help you guys get profit while trading. Now before we get started with that, I just wanted to thank you guys a ton for the 50,000 subscribers. I have no words to even say how grateful I am for that. I really appreciate all the support you guys have given me, as well as the hundreds of donations I've received, and so forth. It's, it's just incredible, I really appreciate it. So to get started here with the video, we're going to cover four important points that go over trading. We'll start with the basics where we'll cover how to trade, the best websites to visit, and how items are priced. Second, we'll talk about how to look out for scammers and what trades you should avoid. Third, I'll give you tips for making profit with small items. And lastly, I'll go over the unusual trading and how to make profit from that as well. Now, I'm not the most experienced trader in the world, and chances are I don't have a clue what I'm talking about, but I've been trading for quite some time now, and hopefully new and even experienced traders can learn Athena 2 by the end of this video. For those of you who haven't even traded with someone before, there are a few ways you can go about doing it. The first way is through TF2 itself. If you click on your items button, on the bottom right there should be an option to either trade players in the server you are in, or players in your friends list. This will send them a notification to trade, and if they accept, it will take you to the Steam trading window and you can do the rest from there. The second way to send a trade is through Steam chat. If your friend is online, you can send a trade by clicking on the arrow button next to the name, and just clicking on Invite to Trade. The last way to trade someone is by sending a trade offer. Trade offers are just like normal trades, except you can choose what items from your backpack you would like from someone else's. Once they receive your offer, they can either choose to decline or accept it. The best part about trade offers is that the other person doesn't have to be online, and you don't even have to add them if you have their trade offer link. Also, just as a quick tip, you can find your trade offer link by going into your Steam inventory, clicking on Trade Offers, and going to Who Can Send Me Trade Offers. Your trade offer link will be located here at the bottom, and whoever clicks it can send a trade offer to your profile. You can also send trade offers to friends by just going to their profile and clicking on Offer a Trade, listed under More. Next up, I'll briefly talk about item qualities, as well as how items are priced. Those of you who are really new to the game probably get confused with all these different colored item names. So I'll just quickly explain what each color represents. The normal quality is for stock items, or the items you start out with in the game. The unique quality is for normal items you get from drops, from crafting an item, or from purchasing it from the Manco store. The vintage quality is for items that were around before some old patches in TF2. They aren't much different from unique items, other than they have existed for a longer time. Next up, the genuine quality is for items obtained through a game cross promotion of some sort or an item purchase. For example, a genuine Tyrant's Helm can be obtained by purchasing a Red Soldier TF2 action figure from the Valve Store. Again, the genuine quality is similar to the vintage and unique quality, because nothing changes besides the name and color. Now the strange quality tracks kills or other such events in an item. Strange items can be obtained by unboxing them from a crate, applying a stranger fire in an item, 
or obtaining one of the bot killer or Australian weapons from man-up mode. And now the ever so popular unusual quality is used on cosmetics, taunts, and some weapons with the special particle effect. Unusual items are obtained by unboxing crates or cases. However, the chance of unboxing unusual is roughly 1%, so unusual items are considered incredibly rare. The haunted quality is designated for Halloween-themed items. Haunted items are obtained in Halloween events by various ways of unboxing or receiving gifts. However, it's basically the same thing as the unique quality. The collector's quality, which is one of my favorites, is given to items by completing special chemistry sets. These chemistry sets can be completed by adding 200 unique versions of the item required to complete the set. For example, if I wanted to pick a collector's ambassador, I would need 200 unique ambassadors in order to create it. And again, collector's items are pretty much like unique items, in that they don't have any special qualities. It just changes the name and the name color. The recent decorated quality is for weapons obtained through completing contracts in the gunmetal update, or by unboxing a weapon case. Decorated weapons are basically reskins of the stock items. The community quality is for items granted by Valve for people who have made valuable contributions to the TF2 community or to the game itself. Community items come with the community sparkle particle effect. The self-made quality is for items granted by Valve for people who are the creators of the items. It's similar to the community quality, and it comes with the community sparkle particle effect. Lastly, the Valve quality is for items that are given to Valve employees. Sometimes these items are given the Flying Bits particle effect, and they may even have additional attributes that change how the weapon works. <sighs> okay, so before making these trades, you should be aware of what the item quality is, and what it actually changes. The item quality does not determine the price of an item, but it can give you a rough idea about the item's rarity. Next, we'll talk about the currency of TF2. In general, people like to use metal and keys as a way to state how much something is worth. The breakdown of metal prices goes like this. One refined equals 1.00 refined, obviously. One reclaimed is going to equal 0.33 refined, and one scrap equals 0.11 refined. This makes sense, because it takes three scrap to make reclaimed metal, and it takes three reclaimed to make refined metal. So if someone said they were selling an item for, let's say, 4.55, that means they are selling that item for four refined, one reclaimed, and two scrap. Or you could also substitute it for four refined and five scrap, same thing. Now keys can also be used as a currency. Generally, keys are used for more expensive items, such as unusuals and Australian weapons. Keys can also be sold for metal. However, the price that keys can be bought and sold for changes often. At the time that I'm making this video, keys are considered to be worth about 16 refined, but obviously these can be destined to change. Next up for the basics, we'll go over tons of websites that are going to be incredibly helpful to know. The first one is backpack.tf. The biggest benefit to visiting this website is that it keeps a price list of almost every single item in the game. If you want to know how much something is worth, you can look it up and it will tell you right beside the item name. You can also put up your items for sale, look at price changes, and even vote on price suggestions that other people put up. Now if you want to use this website as a guide for prices, please, for the love of cookies, only use it as a guide. It's okay if someone sells an item for more or less than what it's worth, so only use the listed price as a general price. Besides, prices change all the time. If people find enough proof that an item is being sold for more or less than what it's worth, then the price of it is going to change. For example, the price of a frying pan could be one refined. If someone wants to change the price to about 0.66 refined, then he has to show proof that lots of people are selling them for about 0.66. If the proof is good enough people vote yes, then the price will go down to 0.66 refined. So just be aware that these prices are never permanent. This is a fantastic website that everyone should know. The next website is tf2outpost.com. Here you can put up your items for sale and browse what other people are selling by just searching for them. If you want to have an easier time simply selling or buying something, this should be the first place to go. It's really simple to use and understand, so this is definitely a website you should visit often. Next is scrap.tf. This website allows you to buy and sell items very quickly through the use of bots. These different bots buy and sell items according to the prices they list. What's great about this is you can get trades done very quickly because you don't have to trade it with any actual people. If you wanted to buy or sell MBM parts, weapons, strangers, chemistry kits, and so on and so forth, you can do it really quickly here. There's also a place to enter and create raffles whenever you desire, and I think that's a fantastic addition to it. It's one of the most convenient websites you'll ever find. The last website I'll cover is marketplace.tf. Here you can buy items with real money and receive those items through bots, similar to scrub.tf. 
The best thing about this website is that you can buy items without getting a 7 day trade restriction. Buying an item off the Steam Market or the Mantco store means you have to wait 7 days before you can trade that item. So I use Marketplace.tf to buy items quickly, so I don't have to wait that long. Okay, hopefully that doesn't seem like a mouthful. Now that most of the basics are out of the way, I'll quickly cover something important you should keep an eye out for, and that's scammers. These people want your items, and they have many ways of obtaining your items. So it's your job to watch out for them and look at all the red flags. Probably the most common use of scamming people is with phishing links. These links usually redirect you to fake websites, where you download something to your computer, and it gives someone your personal information, such as your Steam password. This lets them log into your account and trade the items to themselves. Just as a word of advice, I wouldn't click any links from anybody, unless you are close friends and you trust the person you're talking to. If you somehow get caught in the fiasco after clicking a phishing link, the best thing to do is to change your Steam and email password as soon as you can. It's also important to keep your email verification on. This means you have to check your email in order to complete a trade. If you want to change the settings for this, you can go into your inventory privacy settings, and there should be an option near the bottom. Another common type of scam is where someone impersonates to be your friend. If you're trading some guy and he says something like, Hey, do you have a friend online? I want to make sure your item is legit. Then a bunch of alarms should be going off in your head. These scammers ask you to trade your items to a friend to make sure it's legit or whatever the heck they mean. Meanwhile, someone else sent up their profile name and picture to match your friend's profile to impersonate them. Then once a trader asks you to trade to your friend again, the scammer will receive the items and take off with them. It's a pretty dumb scam, but you'd be surprised how many people fall for this. The next type of scam is from Sharkers. These people basically tell you your item is worth less than it actually is, so we can get a good deal out of it. This is why websites like Backpack.df exist, so you can check the actual price of an item. Just be careful though, small changes in your item might make it worth a lot more than you actually think. For example, a vintage Lugamorph is worth roughly around 5 keys. However, the non-craftable version of the vintage Lugamorph is worth about 160 keys. That's a huge difference that anyone might accidentally look past, and Sharkers can take advantage of this. You should always know how much your item is worth before you trade it. Next up is the old quick switch scam. This involves someone quickly switching out their item to something worth less than what they had in the first place. This is usually common with unusual trades. For example, say you want to buy an unusual burning Panama. They'll put it up for trade and everything will look fine. Then while you're distracted with something else, they'll switch that burning hat to a smoking one, which is worth significantly less. The trade offer scam is pretty common too. These scammers usually include a message with a trade offer to make it look like they're giving items to you, when in reality, they're the ones taking the items. This usually happens to the more unexperienced traders, so just pay close attention before trading. The PayPal scam is very common as well. If people promise to pay you real money for your items, you need to be very cautious. You should never give your items to someone without first getting a middleman. A middleman is someone trusted like a popular server admin or a well-known TF2 player. They check to make sure that someone is given the unusual, and the other person is given the money they were promised. I would avoid these trades if possible, but if you have the good middleman and you would really like to sell your items for money, then you just need to be careful. The last scam I'll cover is the impersonator scam. These people pretend to be famous TF2 players, and they try to get free items from other people on the server. You should always want a quick Steam check before giving away your stuff to someone. If you open up the console in TF2, and type status, then a bunch of names should pop up with numbers next to them. Next to the name of a person should be their Steam ID. Once you have that copied, you can use it to check that person's profile. I like to use Steam ID Finder, but you can use whatever works. Then from there, you can go straight to that person's profile and check if they're legit. Another easy way is to just trade that person in the server, and click on their picture once the trade window comes up. In the end though, just watch out for scammers and try to be an honest player. People are really going to respect you for doing the right thing and making fair trades. Phew, okay. Now that we got all that covered, we can start moving on to the fun stuff. We'll start by going over ways to make profit with small items such as hats, weapons, and so on. If you want to make profit by trading, you must first understand that it's going to take some patience. Unless you're the best trader in the world, chances are you won't trade up to an unusual hat in just a day. It's definitely going to take some time. The general rule for making profit is to just buy cheap and sell for more. This lets you start working your way up very slowly by making small bits of profit with every trade. Then once you start trading up to large items, you can start making slightly bigger profit with every trade. A good place to begin is by selling weapons for a scrap each, 
and buying two weapons with every scrap. This lets you exponentially increase the number of weapons you have, and eventually you'll end up with a lot more than you started. Then as you start to gain a lot more profit, you can start buying and selling cheap hats, strangers, and so on. Next up, you want to start buying and trading items that people are going to want. I mean, for example, a vintage sun on a stick is probably going to be a lot harder to sell than a strange shotgun. If you won't ever use the item yourself, then chances are a lot of other people aren't going to either. It's a good idea to observe other players and see what most people like to equip. This will help you get a better idea of what cosmetics and items are more desirable than others, and that means you have an easier time trading. Another thing you should know is that when you want to make profit, most of the time you're going to get lucky. Every so often you'll find someone selling or buying an item for a really good deal, so you should keep an eye out for those to make profit even faster. Just make your own decisions and be aware of what other players are selling and buying. Also be aware of what special attributes might be included with your item you're buying. For example, if an item is painted a different color, you can probably sell it for a bit more. Generally, if an item is painted, you can add half of the paint price to the item's normal price. Or maybe you're buying a strange from someone. If it has any strange parts attached, you could probably sell that item for a bit more as well. Low craft numbers and certain level numbers can make items worth a bit more too. If an item has a craft number that's between 1 and 100, its worth will usually be a lot higher. You can also check an item's level by looking underneath its name. Sometimes people will spend a tiny bit more for items with special levels, such as 1, 42, 69, 99, and 100. You can use these to your advantage as well. There are also a lot of alternative ways to make profit. One way is to complete killstreak fabricators or chemistry sets. This is when using the steam market can come in handy. You can buy a lot of fabricators and sets for really cheap, and depending on the item, you can sell the completed version for quite a bit more. Of course, there are hundreds of other creative ways to make profit. Just find what works best for you and stick with it. Last but not least, we're going to go over unusual trading. In my opinion, trading unusuals is a lot more fun and rewarding. It isn't as slow as trading really small items if you know what you're doing. To get started, I would suggest, if possible, to keep one cheap unusual hat for yourself, and using a second one to trade up and make profit. If something goes wrong and you accidentally trade your hat for something worthless, you won't be totally down in the dumps. Now, the same general rule applies to unusual trading like trading small items. Buy cheap, sell for more. When it comes to unusual trading, TF2 Outpost is going to be your best friend. You can offer on tons of unusual hats, as well as look at the offers other people give to you. Although trade servers are great too, it's certainly a lot more organized in my opinion. First off, let's go over the unusual effects. Generally, unusual particle effects follow a similar pattern in terms of worth. Burning is considered to be a high tier effect, while nuts and bolts is considered to be a low tier effect. This doesn't mean that burning will always be worth more than nuts and bolts, but again, keyword generally, burning is desired more than nuts and bolts. Unusual effects are also paired into what's called generations. The first effects introduced into the game, such as Searing Plasma, Circling Heart, and Sunbeams, are considered first gen effects. Blizzardy Storm, Nuts and Bolts, and Smoking are all considered second gen effects. Then, of course, there are the Halloween effects, robotic effects, and the line effects, and so on. None of these effects are considered more expensive than the other, but some are definitely more desired than others. Next up, we'll go over the different hats. Because some hats are more desired than others, they can be much more expensive than some cheaper ones. The Kill Exclusive is considered to be a high tier hat, because it can be one with all classes and it looks really nice. Something such as the Dreadnought might be considered low tier because it's not very attractive and it's worn by the Heavy, one of the least played classes. So when you look at an unusual hat, you can be the judge of whether you think it's expensive or whether you think it's cheap. If you'd like to know the general price of the hat, you can always check backpack.tf's unusual price list, and they can tell you the price of the most recent sales of the hat. There are also special unusual hats that are worth more for different reasons. Some unusual hats are called unusual misks. This means that it's an unusual cosmetic that can still be worn with other hats. You could potentially have three unusual effects on at the same time, if you have at least two unusual misk items and one unusual hat. Some other unusual hats are worth a lot more, because you can no longer unbox them, making them even rarer. The hazmat headcase is a good example because it can no longer be unboxed in an unusual quality. Next, I'll briefly explain gifted and duped hats. Now, for whatever reason, people make a big deal out of hats that are gifted and duped. Gifted hats mean they have been wrapped up using gift wrap and delivered to a player. This leaves a small line of text below the description saying who it was gifted by. 
I'm not entirely sure why this is such a big deal to people, but a lot of people will sell gifted hats for a lot less than what they're worth. I honestly don't give a crap about gifted items, but if you want to make profit easier, then I would be cautious when buying one. It's exactly the same as a normal unusual, but the extra line of text seems to bug people, I guess. Duped hats might also be a problem, although they aren't that big of a deal if you're trading cheap unusuals. A duped hat means it was copied off of another original hat, either through glitches or some other means of creating a replica. Again, it doesn't change anything about the hat itself, other than the fact that it was copied and the history is different. If you want to check the history of an item, you can do so by clicking on the item from a website such as TF2 Outpost or TF2 Items Backpack Examiner. Once you copy the ID, you look it up on backpack.df by typing backpack.df slash item slash and the ID. If the hat is clean, then you'll just see a normal screen of all the players who used to own that hat. If it's duped, it will probably have a warning sign above the history, something like this. Now again, I personally don't care if a hat is duped or gifted, but some people might care. So just take that into consideration when trading unusual hats. And lastly, I'll just go over a few tips that might be really useful to know while you're trading your fancy purple hats. Watch out for price changes. You never know if a hat could go down in price the day after you buy it, so check the stats of your unusual hat and make decisions accordingly. Sometimes you can ask for overpay when selling your hat. It's common for people to have a key price for the hat and ask for overpay in other items. If you are selling an unusual hat for 40 keys, you can ask for 45 keys in unusual overpay. Meaning if they don't pay with keys, then they have to pay with an unusual worth about 45 keys. Of course, overpay isn't necessary, and sometimes it should be avoided. But if your hat is more desirable, then it might be something you could use to your advantage. If you have keys, keep an eye out for people quick selling their hats. This means that they are willing to sell their hat for less so they can have keys. Sometimes you can buy some nice hats for really cheap. Themed hats can also be sold for quite a lot. The burning effect is very desirable on pyro hats because pyros might whip in this fire, and it matches really well. Another good example is the Blizzardy Storm effect in the Cold Killer, because it's a winter hat with a snowy effect. If you're one of the few owners of a certain unusual hat, you can have a lot more freedom to choose what you want to sell your hat for. The Circling TF Logo Warpig, for example, which is my dream hat, is being sold for 140 keys pure, even though it's technically worth 100. Because it's the only TF Logo Warpig in existence, the seller can choose what he wants to sell it at without any competition. Whether or not he sells it for 140 keys depends. And finally, there are other ways of obtaining profits, such as unboxing and gambling. But of course, these require an insane amount of luck and it can be very risky. If you have a lot of keys that you just don't know what to do with and you don't care, then feel free to gamble them off, whatever. Just remember that it's a very small chance to actually get anything out of it, and I would just suggest sticking to trading. Dear gosh. <laughs> okay, hopefully, all this information doesn't seem too overwhelming. I mean, I'm coming in tons of information about trading into one video. But really, you learn the most by trading through experience. You're definitely going to make a mistake at some point or another, but you learn the most by trading for yourself and learning. There's still a lot more to trading than you may think, and it's your job to get out there and learn the most that you can and do the most that you can do. Anyways, thank you all for watching this long, drawn out video about trading. Whether or not you've lost confidence in trading or gained some by listening to me, hopefully you can still get the experience of doing it and just enjoying it in one way or another. Thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you all next time.